Her mother and sister gave me some serious creepy crawlies and they're a pair of weirdos. It's kind of a wild ride. Hey, it's Ashley. Welcome back to my channel. I've been wanting to find some new thrillers lately that were going to get me really into the fall thriller spooky spirit. So I decided that I was going to try out the top rated thrillers based on my library and its users. I thought it would be fun to try out some of the books that are popular in my geographical area and see if I agree with the local readers. So I went onto Overdrive and I sorted by thrillers and then by the top rated by library and I picked out a few of the top choices and I read them. And now I'm going to tell you what I thought about them. So I'm going to give you what my library rated these books what I'm rating these books, and then I'm going to give them a 1 out of 5 on the thrill scale. So how thrilling I thought they were, how much they had my heart beating, how much I was freaked out, whatever, on a 1 to 5 scale. So the first book I read was Deep Freeze by John Sanford. Clearly this wasn't exactly it for me. <laughs> this is just a basic murder mystery crime novel that follows a detective who travels to a tiny town in Minnesota to uh, figure out who murdered a woman. Yeah, that's it. I really think the main downfall of this book is that the first chapter we find out exactly who did the crime and we go through exactly what happened from start to finish and then the story picks up and we follow the detective figuring out the clues. And I found that boring as fuck. I don't know about you, but I read a murder mystery to be like in suspense and wondering who did it, and it completely ruins all the fun if you tell me it right away. <laughs> like, I'm not guessing, I'm not, like, there's literally no mystery left. What? So some of the pros for this book was I really enjoyed the setting because I am also from a tiny town in Minnesota, and... I thought it was interesting to read about a setting very similar to mine. There was a lot of funny one-liners from a few of the side characters that had me laughing out loud, so I did really enjoy that aspect. And I thought it was a very well-told story and a good story, I just... the thrill element was lost on me and it just wasn't there. Um, some cons I had for this book, the characters were really bland. Apart from some of their witty humor, they just didn't have a whole lot of personalities. They just kind of talked and they all ran together. Nobody really stood out. Nobody was really memorable. They were all just kind of meh. There wasn't a whole lot of side plot and the side plot that they did have was completely irrelevant to the main plot. And it kept feeling like the side plot was going to intertwine with the main plot but they just didn't at all. It was so weird. And I just did not like knowing who did it. The next book I read was Sharp Objects by Gillian Flynn. So this is a psychological thriller about a journalist who journeys back to her hometown in the South in order to investigate the murder of two young preteen girls. She's a journalist and she's trying to get the scoop for her newspaper and she is talking to the local authorities and different townies and trying to figure out who killed these two little girls. Uh, the main character, Camille, has a very weird relationship with her mother and her stepsister whom she doesn't really talk to. And so Camille is kind of dodging her own demons and also trying to deal with her mother and also trying to figure out this case. So overall, I really like this book. I was pleasantly surprised by it. I thought that there were a lot of good twists and turns. It kept me hooked. I needed to know what was going to happen. Really connected with the main character. She has some pretty serious mental health struggles that she is dealing with as a result of her childhood and just different things. She had a lot of depth to her and I enjoyed reading from her perspective. I really related to her struggles. I will give you a content warning for self-harm in this book. It is a little bit graphic at times. I enjoyed the setting. It was set in a very southern town and I read the audiobook so it was super fun to hear the narrator's different accents. All the little old ladies are gossiping and they've got this twang and they're drinking wine and they have these loose lips and I just loved how the narrator was able to portray them. It really brought another layer of life to the story which is the reason that I do love audiobooks sometimes. Her mother and sister gave me some serious creepy crawlies and they're a pair of weirdos. It's kind of a wild ride. The main character's younger sister is like 13 but she is wild and who you never know really who to trust. You never know if her sister is lying, if her mom's lying, if she's lying, who's who, what their motives are. You just do not know. 
I liked how the main character was a bit problematic at times. She made very questionable decisions pretty much all the time, but it was in a way that was kind of relatable and made you understand why she was doing it, and it also made you just kind of want to hug her and make it better. And there were also lots of really good plot twists. The ending, I did not see coming at all. Like, I was rooting for somebody and then they, they let me down. I was like, Oh, and I didn't have any cons for this book. 5 out of 5 means I loved it, I didn't think that anything needed to be changed, and I really did like it. The next book I read was Seeing Red by Sandra Brown. So Seeing Red is a political thriller and it follows another young journalist who is trying to get the interview of a lifetime. She wants to interview this major who 25 years ago was photographed helping a bunch of people out of the building after a bombing. And he became this huge national hero and 25 la years later he no longer does any interviews, talks to any press, and she wants the scoop. She enlists the help of the major's estranged son to help her get this interview and he's super reluctant but he finally sets it up and then the major and Kira are attacked by gunmen the night of the interview. So we are launched into this political thriller of who did it, why did they want us dead, and why is there this conspiracy. I really liked this book. I thought it was pretty action-packed. There was hella sexual tension in this book. Whoa. There was a little bit of angst. Okay, so some pros for this book. I really liked the premise. It definitely kept me guessing and kept me wondering where the story was gonna go. There were lots of twists and turns. My jaw was definitely hanging open at a few of the plot twists that I did not see coming. There was a very angsty, very slow burn romance in this book that I didn't even really see coming and all of a sudden just was there. They hated each other and then later they, they don't. I thought it was very interesting, it was all convoluted, the political stuff was really good and I enjoyed reading about it. Some cons for this book, um, the main female character was just kind of there. Her personality was not nearly as fleshed out as the main male character. He was angsty, he was rude, he was this bad boy, and it was all very well fleshed out and we knew exactly who he was. And then with the female, it was just kind of like, she was just a chick. You know. She was fine, but she was just kind of along for the ride and she didn't really have any qualifying, like, personal characteristics that I could pull out and name. She just didn't have as strong of a personality as he did. And I think that it really would have added to the romance and the whole plot if she had been just as developed as he was. The sex scenes had some awkward wording in them. They were fine and they were good. It was just kind of weird. It, like, it seemed like some old man wrote it. It was paced well in the beginning, but the last 25%, the pacing slowed down a little bit, and I didn't love that. I kind of wanted it to keep up that same momentum, and it just did not hold up there. But overall, it was a really good story. And finally, I read The Rooster Bar by John Grisham. So we follow a group of law school friends who are one semester away from graduating and they realize that their debt that they're about to accrue after graduating is completely insurmountable. They're never going to pay it off. They enrolled in a horrible law school. They have no job prospects. They're just shit out of luck. And they decide to up and leave school and run over to the local courthouse and pretend to be lawyers anyway what could happen? The fact that they can do this and get away with it for even any amount of time is very confusing and problematic and questionable, but I just set that aside. Who knows? Maybe they wouldn't check. I mean, he they point out, you know, no. So I really like this story. I was really sucked into the plot and I loved the premise of it. It was very unique and interesting and I just unlike anything I've ever seen. Some things I really liked about this book. I love the plot, even though it was unrealistic. It was super fun to explore, like, what could happen? Could you get away with this? What would happen if you didn't get away with it? And I thought that the side plot added a layer of interest that kept me wanting to read. And it was also kind of emotional and had me, like, almost in tears a few times. And then my cons. So while the side plot was interesting, it added almost nothing to the main plot. Um, it was almost like a couple separate books. It was interesting, but it just didn't really flow with the whole law school scam story, and it just complicated things, and then made other things really convenient, and it just kind of didn't feel like it fit. And I didn't really connect with the characters on a very deep level. Um, they were very surface level, they didn't have too many personality quirks or traits or anything. The two males were virtually indistinguishable, I couldn't tell them apart at all. And they were just kind of like bland people. 
but I enjoyed what they were doing. They just weren't really all that well developed. So there you have it. Those are my thoughts on a few of my library's top rated thriller books. Let me know down in the comments below what your favorite thriller ever is. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and I will see you next time. Bye guys.